Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another journaling on a budget starting from scratch. And today we are going to just make some things to put in our journals as we're decorating or we want little things to tuck in or use in collage or whatever. So I've got a couple of things here that, that I thought that I would show you um, how you can do on yourself. The first one is like little tags. Um, you know, you see people using them and you think, well, that's really cool. I want to get some of those. And you can just make them yourself. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really take much of anything. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to set it just below the edge of my paper so that I can get a nice line on the edge of my paper so that our tags will have a border. And you can use these for tags or for tickets. And just go ahead and put a line there. And then I'm going to come over to the other side. I don't want to move my ruler because I want to make sure that I keep it straight. And so I'm just going to come over to the other side. Oops, I got that a little wide. And I'm just going to make a line there. Now, I made it a little wide right here. I kind of turned my ruler sideways. And so I got some over here. That doesn't matter. I'll just cut straight along that line. And that little bit will be over here. It doesn't matter. We'll be doing something with that later anyway. So um, that's totally fine. Now I'm going to come out here to the edge. And I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'm going to just turn this into some tags by drawing, drawing lines through the middle. Now, first thing we'll do is I'm going to cut it out because I want to show you an easy way to do your lines. But I don't want to do it with a whole piece of paper. So I'm going to just cut along this line, leaving that brown on there as much as I can. And if I cut off a little bit too much brown in one spot or I don't have the brown coming out to the edge in another, you just go ahead and fill that in with your marker when you're done. So there we go. Now we've got that. I've got a little spot here where it doesn't have any brown. So I'll just go in and just really quickly just touch that. And that looks good. Now, the easy way to make tags or tickets is to just take your piece of paper and decide if I fold it in half and then fold it in half again, that would be about the size of my tag. Is that about the size I want? Or do I want them bigger? Do I want to maybe want to try and fold it in thirds? And make them about that big. So I think to make them a little bit smaller, um, I am going to go ahead. Well, let's do them in thirds. I already have some that I've done and, and I'm just going to eyeball it. They don't have to be exactly exact. You can measure if you want to. This is just kind of um, an easy way that I do it. So that's about a third right there. So I'm just going to give that a fold. And then I'm just going to come over here and fold this one over. And now I know exactly where I need my lines. Like I said, if you want to, you can go ahead and um, you know measure and draw them just where you want them now when I want to line my ruler up I just hold my paper up like this and then push my ruler up to it so I know where my fold is like that and then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing now I have a very plastic ruler and it's quite thick so when I draw on this, I do wind up getting the marker on my ruler. So you want to be careful about transferring that onto your, you know, getting it on your paper. And a lot of times I just go ahead and just kind of rub it off like this. Or just wipe it off with a damp cloth. But that way I know even if there's a little brown on there, it's probably already been rubbed off. So it's not going to get on my next piece of paper. And then this is kind of grungy looking and it really does kind of look cool for, you know, something else. So now we have these little tags. Now let's say, and, and here I have one that I did the same size, but I made it into four. 
And then here's one where I made it the same size, but I drew a line down the middle. So I would have little teeny tiny tags. I usually leave them together. You can cut them all apart right away, or you can leave them together. And then you can do with them what you want. I saw, um, I was watching Roxy Creations the other day, and she had some little tags that she had bought, you know, like online. Um, you can print them. And um, I really thought they were kind of cool. So I decided to make my own because hers had numbers on them. And I just thought that those were really kind of cool. So now this is two tags. I would cut it right down the middle. And, um, you know, and then I would have a couple tags with numbers. You can put words on there. Um, you know, you can, you know, put a little drawing on there. You can do whatever you'd like. But I just think that they're kind of cool. So, you know, so now I have all of these little tags. And the other thing that you can do with them, well, let's do it with this one right here. I'm going to fold it on the lines. just like that and then like that and one more time and so now we've got all four of them right on top of each other and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come to the corner and I'm just gonna kind of round off this edge now if you want to draw that on there so that they're all exactly the same now I tend to like cut a little bit differently, so I'm gonna just flip this over so that hopefully my cut is kind of the same. But they don't have to be perfect, but like I said, if you want to, you can um, draw the little curve on there. Now my fold here, this one is quite far off from my fold up there, so I'm not going to, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one like this and what I do is I start my scissors straight in and as soon as I start to make a cut then I just kind of round it up like that okay and then we're going to do the same thing these three are lined up so I'll leave them like that that other one just would have been either would have made these really big or the edge of that one really small because of the way that it was lining up So there we go and now we have tickets and if you want to you can go in with your brown pen and you can go along those edges but you don't have to and I just think those look cool so we have little tiny tags label type tags or or just regular tag type tags and you can do with those whatever you want we have tickets that you can decorate up you could write ticket on there if you want admit one um, and then here we have some larger ones and again you could make those into tickets or you can leave them just like they are you know cut them into pieces and put them on your project and put something on there the larger ones are prettier to do a little collage like in the middle and um, or put some little flowers or something on so there we have those and then in the same type you know idea is labels you see everybody using labels and you know they're so you can just make your own I have a whole ton of them here you just make them and then you just you know sit and do something with the edges however you want to that one doesn't even have anything done to it yet but just kind of scribble along the edges use your ruler to make straight lines if you want to this one I cut on a diagonal. Now I can actually, if I want to, cut that in half. I did it like this so I could put something on the top and the bottom. Put little stitch marks on it, little lines on it, and you can make some up so that you have labels for when you want to use them, and they're just so easy. Those ones I did with the tear ruler. So it's just a matter of, yeah, I'm gonna tear this way. Okay, I'm gonna put the, the jagged side of my tear ruler right on the very edge of my paper so that I don't waste very much and again that little spot that I had that was bad it's going to wind up getting torn off now so it didn't hurt a thing and then I'm going to put my ruler on there just to hold that down nice and tight and because I'm tearing a really small bit there's hardly anything under there I'm going to make sure that I move my fingers to put the pressure where I'm ripping so that I don't pull that out from underneath up oh see like that I didn't want to pull that out and that's why I was putting the pressure right on the edge but I didn't move my hands because I was talking 
So I'm just going to put this back on here. Make sure that I put my fingers here to where I want to rip it now. Hold it down. And rip it on my tear roller. I usually don't have that much of a problem, but you know, that's how it works when you're trying to do a recording. Okay, and then I'm just going to come over here and say, um, I want my, let's say I'm going to make my tags this wide. I can make some wide ones, and I can also make some kind of um, longer skinny ones. So that's kind of a nice size to tear. So again, I'm going to hold this down. You rip at an angle, and it rips much easier. And so there we go. And now we can just make some labels with this. I'm going to rip off this little bit down here. Hold on to it nice and tight. Pull at an angle. And then come over here and do the same thing. Hold it down nice and tight. Rip it at an angle. And then we can make, let's say we want to make a big one. Like that, kind of a rectangle shape. And you don't have to make your tags ripped or your labels ripped. You can make them, you can just cut them. See, now we have that size. And we could leave that one that big. We could cut it in half. We could make it, let's make one that's a little bit smaller even. There we go. And then we have this one too. And then you just go ahead and decide how it is that you want to decorate them up. And like I said, I like to just sit in the evenings. I just um, either cut a bunch or tear a bunch. And then I just sit in the evening with my ruler or um, just freehand and just decide what is it that I want to do with that label. So, And then just do it like this. Now, you don't have to. Um, use a pen. You can use your markers. You can use whatever you have. You can paint the edges. If you have ink, you can just ink the edges. You can leave them plain. And if you do them up ahead of time, it's no different than if you had went to the store and bought a bunch so that they were there and ready to go when you needed them. And there we go. It's just a cute little label, and I like the way that those look. So those are a couple of different things. We've got our labels that we can make, and we have little tags that we can make, and tickets. And then the last thing is buttons. You always want to have buttons. And so what I did was, and again, I'm just sitting in the evening and cutting these out. I just drew some circles onto a piece of um, chipboard, and the way that I did the circles, the way that's easiest for me to do circles is to um, draw around the inside of something rather than the outside. I find that easier, and so I just used um, the tape roll that we bought to make our washi tape. Just hold that down and just go like that. Just make sure that you press around the outside edge of that plastic reel in there. And because when, when I do around the outside, sometimes I hold my pen like this, and then I hold it like this, and then I hold it like this, and it actually does um, misshape in your circle just a little bit. It works fine, but if you have something you can draw inside of, you can just do it a lot faster. You don't have to really pay attention to make sure that you keep your pen at the same angle to not move the lines of that circle. And, you know, see how fast you can just, you know, do a whole ton of circles. And then you just cut those out. So, and normally when you're using something that's heavy like this, it's easiest to kind of cut down close to your shape, but leave something to hang on to. And then just cut them out. And then just take your time so that, and you know, by using the inside of that tape reel, then my circles are all going to be basically the same size. It's not like punching them or cutting them with a die cutting machine. They'll be a little more perfect but we don't have to have it exactly perfect. You just want to do a nice job because they are homemade. So just cut those out. And then once you get them cut out, what I do is I just take my scissors 
and I run them along the shiny side. Now, if you have an emery board or a piece of sandpaper, um, you can just go ahead and sand the back of your your chipboard if it has the shiny side on it because you want something for your glue to be able to grab onto and the glue does not like to stick to the shiny stuff and do make sure that you get up to the edges because you want those edges to glue together nice and solid you can use this to make your button just as a single um, circle I usually like to double them up just to make them a little bit thicker and so I just have a whole bunch of them here that I was just sitting and you know I cut them all out and I scratched them all up and then I just take two of them and just glue them together and I glue the scratched sides together that I know that then I have a good surface for the glue to stick to and then depending on how I use my button if it hangs off you know the edge of something or if I'm going to use it just as some kind of a dangle down um, I don't have to worry about the the colored side the scratched up side showing I put those together and then I've got the chipboard on both sides and you can do two or three however many you want to depending on what you have to punch your hole is something you will want to think about because you want to be able to punch a hole in that and if you don't have a pokey tool, then it, they're a little bit harder to punch. Certain things that, you know, I've been keeping track of some of the things that I miss. One thing that I do miss is a pokey tool. Um, and, you know, you can use anything for a pokey tool. If you have a metal skewer or something like that in your kitchen drawer, you can use that. A, a Phillips screwdriver. I have this pokey tool it comes in a four pack from um, Harbor Freight for like they have them on sale for like 99 cents for the four pack or $1.99 um, sometimes on sale too but you know the thing is is that I did not get a pokey tool when I purchased what I had bought for this project um, for this journaling series and I am only using what I have for this series so if you don't have one, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so this is something else that I saved. This is an old t-shirt of Papa's, and it had a hole in it, and I was going to throw it away, or, well, usually I rip them up and use them for, um, just use them for rags around the house, but I'm going to use it um, as something soft to punch through. And then what I've done is I have cut a circle out of a magazine. Well, actually, it was out of our book, our flower book. I cut the circle that's the same size, and then I folded it in half, and I folded it in half, and then right at the point, I poked a hole through it. Now I poked a hole through it, which it went through like the first layer or two, and then it just made a dent in the other layer. So then I just opened it up and pushed it through there so that I had the four holes were all in the same spot. And that way, you have a template to put your holes on your button. So I'm going to hold that on there, and I'm going to make a mark where I need my holes to be. Make sure they went through. Yes, they did. Okay, so now we've got where we're going to put our buttonholes on there. And then you can just use a pen, you can use a needle or a pin, and... um. And then you just have to give it a good push. And I find, too, that it's easier um, to do it while your glue is wet than before your glue dries because your glue makes it a lot harder. You just want to make sure that, you you know, you hold it together. I let, you know, that glue grabbed. I let it get a little bit dry. And then I just kind of twist it a little bit as I'm pushing and then just push down on it. If you have something soft underneath, um, then you'll be able to do that. Now, my cardboard's getting a little bit wrinkly because it's also kind of squishing into the fabric, and that's okay because we're going to cover it. So um, if it gets a little bit wrinkled, that's okay. And also, once the glue dries, then... So now we have our four holes in our button, 
and I usually go through and just open them up a little bit and then set it aside to dry and then you can go in and, and fix those holes up even a little bit more. Um, I usually kind of go from both sides after it's all dry and um, just kind of get those holes opened up a little bit. But there we go. Now we have a button. We can actually sew through that button. And once you get your button and you get your holes in your button, um, then all you're going to do is just decide how you what you want your button to look like. So this one, I did these out of um, just some of the extra little bits in my flower book and you know that they weren't really big enough to make tags or anything but they would make really pretty buttons and so that is how you can make your own buttons I, I have some more here that are just cut out and all you do is you just take those and glue them to your button I don't know what I did with the one that I just glued together well it's here somewhere um there it is so you're just going to take that after this is dry and you'll just take that and just glue it right onto the top and go ahead and poke your holes in there. I usually use a pin from our sewing kit and I just poke the holes from the back so I know where they are and then I take my pen and push down into it and that way that gives you really nice, it gives you a really nice finished hole on the front side. So there we go. And um, so that's another thing that we can make for our projects. And buttons are really cool to hold things shut. And, you know, you can use them for different parts in your project. You can also just glue them on um, to a collage or something. But I thought that that was something that was fun to make. Oh, let's throw this back up here. And we'll just put these out here. So those are our projects for today. We can make buttons and we can make labels of any size that we want and we can make our tags and we can make tickets or just some kind of um, larger tags or in or things to embellish so those are some of the projects that we've got for our book now and they're nice little projects to sit in the evening and just play around with and so I did want to show you that I have finished I had, I finished kind of gutting out my flower book and what I've done is anything I wasn't that didn't have pictures or pictures that I wanted um, I just stuck those in the front of the book so that I can go through and still get the words off of there um, I didn't have a piece of paper to put my words on as I was doing some, and so I, I started gluing them across the front of the book here. So they'll have this pretty green paper in the backing. But um, And I want to do something with this, but I haven't decided what yet. But I pretty much just went through and I pulled out all of the pages that I wanted and, um, and cut out all of the pretty flowers. And then again, I can go through all of these and find words, like that was a good word right there. It said support and it was in nice dark letters this book see support that would be a really nice word to put in my journal I would like that one um, but I just kind of wanted to show you that that I was just sitting in the evenings and doing that and so I have wound up with all of these pages now I have them all cut and they're easier for me to see. Like these would make nice postcard sizes right here. Um, but they're just easier for me to see if I cut them out of the book. Sometimes it's hard for me to picture what I'm going to do with it when it's inside the book with all the writing and everything. And also I know then what I wind up getting out because sometimes I go to rip a page out and then I rip my picture a little bit and it doesn't work for what I want it to. But, you know, so I just cut out all of the flower pictures. And now I have them all ready to go. This one I thought might make a really cute tag or a belly band that goes sideways across the book. And um, there were a few like that that had writing on them that I thought might make kind of um, cool inserts into the book of some sort. Oops. Oh, this one had like um, just some de like definitions on it, which I thought was kind of cool. And just these ones with the 
you know, with the numbers. Oh, this goes with that. So, but anyways, I wanted to show you that I got all of those out of there. And then I have all of these flowers and leaves now to use on my projects. And there's just a ton of them. So, um, but to me, looking at them like this again makes it so much easier for me to for, for me to decide what I want to use because seeing that in the book sometimes I don't see it you know like what it would look like on my project and then the little extra bits I was talking about I used to cut out circles to make buttons so thank you very much for stopping by I really do appreciate it I hope that you have fun playing with some of these projects I know that I did and again if you have an old t-shirt save it because it can be used for things oh also a few things that I'm also saving is um, dryer sheets because they make really cool layering you can see through them and everything use dryer sheets because the new ones um, have that stuff on them and they don't stick very well with glue and then also I've been washing a few of my coffee filters off I've been throwing the coffee grounds into the garbage washing my filters off and letting them dry because they might come in handy for something and it's a cool textured paper so thank you again very much for stopping by I really do appreciate you and I hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye